hi uh, uh, hi i am shimant uh, hi good afternoon all uh, uh, and all present in this session uh, first of all i am thankful to both the architect of our session mr satyajit and uh, mr sandeep uh, who had taken mpc to the next level uh, thank you uh, so uh, today i have uh, given an opportunity to introduce dr subhradeep uh, mitra actually uh, uh, just uh, i will tell a few things about him uh, he is doctor in ems working in bhubneshwar only so he is basically from kolkata west bengal and uh, his passion uh, is about photography yes uh, two more things added into that he is a very good singer also and uh, rather to then uh, that he is a good writer also uh, he loves to travel uh, obviously photography is passion uh, presently uh, he is using nikon d500 uh, d500 uh, and uh, with 200 and 500 lens uh, he is having a spare lens of, of p950 uh, and uh, earlier he was uh, using d5200 with 700 and 300 lens uh, i know him 3 uh, 4 years back uh, actually we uh, uh, we met 2 uh, 3 times uh, first of all he is a very good human being and uh, i know him personally uh, uh, and uh, over to you sir and he is a very good uh, he do uh, bird photography birding is his hobby uh, birding is his uh, uh, hobby actually and uh, rather to that he is uh, he is very enthusiastic about the uh, wildlife uh, basically he knows the birds name their habitats their uh, their uh, their nature and uh, he is a quite nature lover so over to you Sur subradeep sir uh, please continue sir that was too much for an introduction simon bhai <laughs> <laughs> so um, basically um, when i am i'm really thankful to my photography club and mr sandeep and everyone uh, when uh, mr sandeep asked me to present something i was at loss i said that there are too many good people who are prolific in this field and i am really a novice who is learning so many things from these giants so but then um, i thought okay i can at least present a few stories uh i think there had been many classes which are ongoing as well uh, in this forum tomorrow dr santosh will also present about editing and everything so i would uh, rather not go into uh, the editing photography etc but i will rather share uh, my experience over uh, maybe past 10 years which i am uh, for which i am been birding approximately i was a binocular birder frankly and then uh, i had a very simple olympus uh, photography uh, digital um, photograph uh, i mean the camera but then i changed over to uh, nikon in uh, i think year 2014 since then i am a, i'm using nikon and from 2018 i am using the current set so mm, let me share my screen i have a ppt to share uh is my screen visible to all of you no uh not yet not yet okay <clears throat> give me a minute is it visible now no sir not yet just hold on just hold on. there was some update which went on uh दादा थोड़ा शेयर स्क्रीन कीजिए ना मतलब शेयर स्क्रीन नहीं हो रहा है क्या सर ही 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 ड्रॉप ड्रॉप आ रहे हैं हमारे वापस मैं ऐड कर रहा ओके ओके माय होल स्क्रीन इज बीइंग विजिबल यस ओनली पार्ट ऑफ इट नो नो द होल स्क्रीन इज विजिबल ओके 
whole screen means the presentation only ha uh, the whole uh, yeah i mean the, the uh, there is no tag uh, anywhere no 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 no, no okay. tag only the full screen of the slide okay thanks thank you right thank you so um, i have um, given a title of the gospels of a dryad let me uh, first tell you what is a who is a dryad a dryad is basically a person who it's basically uh, the this this concept is generated in africa the stories of different villages different uh, era the people of different era there was no script in africa so how these stories were were carried forward by means of dryad who were basically the storytellers considered to be one of the wisest people who roam from a village to village and everywhere they go people actually appreciate them coming at their villages and uh, gather around them to learn the story the dryads hand pick people from the villages who will further uh, i mean progress with this uh, stories so that's how in africa this stories were recorded for uh, for centuries so i because i intend to tell you stories of uh, budding of my experience for there must be a few people who are new uh, to this field i think uh, these stories may inspire them so and uh, along with that obviously i will share a few of my photos um, and i have tried to knit them into a story so that's why this title the gospels of a dryad and uh, in the screen you can see yellow browed bulbul and i was trying to tell you that uh, it's calling so the dryad is calling to tell the story so it started uh, in a place called uh, dalwich village this concept of mind game uh, i was in uk and um, my senior colleagues from whom uh, i was uh, getting training uh, they asked me uh, which other countries have you visited so i told uh, that this is the first time i am outside india but at the same time i must say that we don't have to go from country to country to have a different feeling we just have to move from one state to another state and everything changes the food the language the atmosphere the nature the birds the wildlife everything changes and they were how is it possible and i said that's possible because this india it's so vast and so beautiful that you should come and visit some of them have already visited india um, after this conversation so uh, this is uh, back in 2017 when i was also trying to do some landscape photography this is uh, in front of loch ness which is a which is one of the most famous lakes in scotland as you can see the ripples are were you able to see the monster up. Yes, this is the place of Loch Ness monster. Yes, and uh, there is an award also, by the way. If you can spot the Loch Ness monster and document uh, yes. them, yes. we took a travel uh, over Loch uh, over Loch Ness to Dog Garok, I think, from Arkuhat to Dog Garok. Uh, it's absolutely right. So this is Loch Ness in front of Loch Ness, and this is the Arkuhat Castle. You can see the meadows. the lockness at the background actually the color of the water is pitch black which uh, but this reflects the sky so beautifully that without any editing it looks so blue so this is one of the most wonderful uh, places i have ever been and this is also lockness uh, we you can see some boats there i think uh, uh, satyajit sir has lot of passion for this uh, for this photography i was seeing his photography a few days back and pradeep sir was also there uh, dr kirti is also there i think uh, who also does landscape photography avidly so i know these people i don't know others uh, must be dr santosh i have seen his beautiful landscape photography these were, these were uh, not really nice but these were memorable moments for me also in and around uh, we i could find 
a few birds which are relatively uncommon in India, like Eurasian magpie or common chaffinch male. And this was the place known as Port of Leith, again in Scotland, with a beautiful sunset. And you can see uh, this uh, landscape. This was very, very beautiful. And again, a few of the birds which we uncommonly see in India, like European robin or Eurasian oyster catcher or mallard, I could spot over there. Uh, one thing which was really uh, astonishing over there, I actually realized why a common starling is called a common starling because it's not at all common in India. Uh, what we find is common mina. So common starling is common over there. And because it's the uh, European people who have nomenclature, who have given the names to such uh, birds, they have found it's pretty common, which is actually not so common in India can be found in northern part and a little bit of central part of India also towards the western side uh, in, in limited period of time. But it's a very, very beautiful bird. While in breeding plumage, you can see almost iridescent colors of green and violet over this bird. So ultimately, I came back to India to explore the vastness of it. And so in my uh, uh, presentation, I have divided India into four parts, obviously North, East, West, and South. And I would like to cover one place each of from North, East, West, and South, and to show you the um, avifauna, uh, also a little bit of wildlife, um, and the places, and uh, I'll share a few interesting stories uh, which I have encountered in these places. Uh, this is a Baya Weaver, which I have clicked in Sukna Lake, which is a very, very, uh, I mean, kind of a tourist hotspot and also a hotspot for wildlife lovers in Chandigarh. And this is obviously uh, all of us, majority of us who are present here, who are from Orissa know that this is a pale cap pigeon, and obviously this is clicked in a camera garden. So the first place uh, is a relatively um, uncommon place known as Nagrota Suryan. This is actually some 250 kilometers uh, from Chandigarh. There is a very nice place uh, in the north of Chandigarh known as Palampur, where you can see the Choti Tibba, which are basically snow-clad mountain, and this is close to Kangra Valley. And as you can see in this map, that there is a water body close to this place, which is basically the uh, backwater of Bias, and this is known as Pong Dam. So a part of Pong Dam, you can visit in this uh, nice place. It's, it's a picturesque place and a very uh, small town. There is only one a uh, forest guest house where we stayed that is probably that time back in 2016 17 that was the only accommodation that was available in nagrota suryan and as you can see this was en route nagrota suryan uh, it's basically the kangra fort so just to give you a brief uh, idea about how this place was this is bias and you can see this was a kind of a foggy morning it was winter and uh, you can see that uh, the train is moving over the Bias. And uh, this place is, uh, is Nagrota Suryan where we actually went. I will, so I will show you the photograph. This is in front of us. So this is the backwater of Bias. And this place is known as Bathuki Lahari. This uh, during uh, uh, monsoon, these temples remain submerged inside the Pong Dam, the backwaters. And this, because this is winter, you can see them. This is a temple. And when you look at the backside, you can see these meadows and with snow clad mountain at the backside. So the vastness of uh, these meadows and the mountain and the backwaters, uh, that was uh, really stunning in Nagrota Suryan. This is not a very known place, but I really 
liked it for its vastness. And of, of course, uh, you can see a lot of migratory birds. They flock together uh, in Nagrota Surian. Every year, you can see a flock of bar-headed goose, pintails, I can see loads of them. And they, they actually gather around in huge numbers. When we went in uh, January, it was, they were probably in some 10, 15 thousands. And this was taken in 7,300 millimeter camera and you can easily appreciate the closeness of this bar headed goose with me because this is an un, almost an uncropped image. And you could see a lot of gulls also congregating there, including Palas's gull, etc. Also, I really liked uh, taking the photo of this uh, white throated fantail for uh, people who do not know uh, what a fantail does uh, from the name itself, it fans its tails. So uh, whenever they dance, they dance with a beautiful song and uh, they move from one twig to another twig and uh, fans its tail in a very funny way. They're very restless, but so I really like clicking the photograph of this white coated and But what mostly enthralled me was clicking the photograph of these two birds um, that was uh, at that point of time back in 2016 uh, it was my lifer uh, although you can see the photo is noisy and clumsy but i really like the bokeh of this gray-headed canary flycatcher which is a beautiful bird whenever it flies the canary yellow color is uh, visible and um, i mean otherwise because of its olive green back, it kind of camouflages with the background, but whenever it flies, its belly is exposed and the, and the bright canary yellow color is exposed and it looks like a yellow fleck uh, running, I mean, flying from here to there, which is a beautiful scene. And this is obviously an, a yellow bellied fairy fantail. This was my life at that point of time. Again, a very, very pretty and tiny wood bird. So uh, from north to coming to east, uh, also uh, because by that time I already changed over uh, to Bhuvaneshwar. So in this, uh, I will share a few of the birds which I have clicked uh, in and around Bhuvaneshwar. So this is again pale cap pigeon and we have travel, we will now travel towards east. Uh, for East, I have chosen a place which is known to a lot of bird watchers. It's very famous actually, known as Lat Panchar. And one of the attractions in Lat Panchar is a very shy bird known as red-headed trogon. I was lucky to photograph this bird. It's a male in breeding plumage. It was in the month of April. So they were running here and there in search of mate and responded to calls also but they're very, very shy. I could click only two photos of this before it flew away again. And this was the trip uh, which I, where I went with my wife uh, after our marriage, you can see a uh, North Bengal. My wife stayed in North Bengal for seven long years, like I stayed in Chandigarh. So North Bengal is a place which you must visit. People who uh, uh, do uh, birding or wildlife, people who do landscape, it's a place to go every year in almost every season to explore. It's a wonderful place to be. And you can see a toy train. This is uh, clicked close to Rong Tong, a place in North Bengal. So in North Bengal, in the first day, on the first day when we, we reached at around 2.30 uh, PM from Bag after um, we reached Bagdogra from Bhuvaneshwar at around 12 o'clock and uh, uh, there is a nice homestay, Hornbill homestay, uh, the driver of which picked us up. And we reached North Bengal, I mean, Lat Panchur. It's a small, tiny village um, uh, at around 2.30. So we had our lunch and we went to explore the place. And the first bird which we clicked was Sultan Tit. We, was, uh, we were actually standing somewhere on the road and it was in the uh, abyss close by. It was fluttering constantly. And, uh, and there was a, a kind of a tussle between this Sultan Tit and uh, there was a well, 
uh, there was a knot hatch, white tail knot hatch close by. Uh, they were fluttering with each other. And this is again a very beautiful bird as you can see. And it was uh, clicked in, um, I think it was really dark over that time. So it was the photograph was a bit noisy, but then uh, uh, this is what it looked like. And the next morning uh, we could click uh, dollar bird, which is very, very raucous. There were three, four dollar birds uh, uh, close to Shiv Khola. And uh, if, you, uh, if you don't know how to find them, you just have to listen to it. it there was a tea garden and our guide, uh, Mr. Parag Guru, was, a, was an excellent guide. He told us, just wait, we'll find the raucous call. And uh, we found that uh, three or four dollar birds, they kind of played with each other uh, from the sky and the, and the call was ah, something like that, very raucous for a beautiful bird like this. It was really, really raucous, but uh, their display, uh, it was again a breeding time for them. They were searching for mates and uh, uh, the display was wonderful. I think uh, as Parag told us, there was probably one girl for which uh, there were two dollar birds who were vying with, with each other, giving us ample opportunity to click uh, the photograph of this beauty as you can see. Uh, this is the trip where one of my, uh, my I mean, dream shot uh, was possible. This, was, this is the helmet bird, as you can see, the beautiful helmet over it. And this is the first time I actually realized that the, uh, the topmost part, the crown of the helmet is actually has a beautiful bluish tinge. And this, by the way, this fluttering thing, which I don't know how it contains an egg. This is, by the way, the nest of this beautiful bird. Again, this is a raucous bird. I will, this comes with a lot of noise, very restless, and constantly flutters the blue tail uh, up and down. And this is a wonderful display uh, of this bird, which we could click over there. But the best part of the trip was, of course, the rufous necked hornbill. This endangered species is uh, mostly photographed in this particular village, has a kind of very limited area of distribution. Currently, they are really, really endangered. And uh, if you want to, want to photograph uh, rufous necked hornbill, you have to go from January to April. And from January to April, you can actually find different facets of this bird. Now, this is a male bird and you cannot see female bird, adult female bird uh, during April because by usually by end of February or March actually, uh, the female usually goes inside the nest and uh, for laying eggs and um, it is the male partner or the father who takes care of the whole family. So let me tell you how this happened. This was a I wanted to share this experience of mine because uh, uh, this is the time when our guide told us you have to wait. Uh, so we were uh, on for searching this bird at around 6.30 a.m. We are sitting over a very narrow cliff and he showed us a spot where it should come. But he repeatedly told us, don't take away your eyes from the tree because once you miss it, it is gone and it will not come back in another one hour or something. And he had some, he actually had to cast his vote. So he said, I will go, I will go and cast my vote and come back. So we were waiting, we were waiting for nearly two hours by the, by the time our guide also cast his vote and came back and everything happened, but it was not coming. So uh, by the time he was explaining what it has gone to. So it has gone to search for food uh, to feed the young ones as well as uh, his wife. He's a uh, you know, very, very responsible father and a very, very responsible husband. <laughs> so then I realized why. When it came, it has a huge wingspan. And 
there is a sound of food and that's the exact sound it actually gives you the feeling of a sail or a big boat coming through and it landed just close to this tree it picked up a lot of fruits from the tree chewed it inside its large bill and gradually start knocking over his nest and we were waiting passionately and we were clicking photographs and as you can see the beak of the wife has come out of this nest which is kind of half closed by mud and everything and it started uh, regurgitating all the chewed fruits into the beak of its uh, uh, wife and it gradually started taking away all the fruit so that was one of the wonderful moments that we have experienced uh, on that day and if you go uh, to lat panchar uh, in january or february as well as in march you will find that how uh, the 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 male kind of coax and cajole the female and uh, their mating display their courtship that was also wonderful to watch मतलब बहुत लोग मेटिंग कर रहे हैं ह्यूमंस बैठे हैं सॉरी आई कैन यू प्लीज अ बिट लाउडर सॉरी मतलब डॉग मेट मारे करते हैं नो नो तुम्हारा बॉडी नो सॉरी शुड शुड आई मूव ऑन सॉरी सॉरी एनीबॉडी वाज आस्किंग समथिंग हां सर प्लीज प्लीज गो ऑन सर ओके so as you can see we have covered uh, north and east for the time being this is um, the photograph of a very elusive bird which we have clicked in mangala jodi uh, i think this session only cinnamon bittern it gave us very few time um, raised its head and uh, trust me if you don't know it's there you don't know you will miss it it's very very shy and the, you can look at the complexion also it's kind of uh, uh, it camouflages with uh, the bushes very much so now we will travel to west so this is again a photograph from our bhetnoi uh, where you can uh, people who are not from odisha they don't know uh, you can go to this place to have beautiful black bugs uh which roam around there this is a male black, black bug which is chasing a female juvenile i don't know for what reason so so the 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 place which i have chosen for west is little ran of kutch where uh, the show stopper i went there with uh, santosh sir and uh, deepa who is my wife and uh, the show stopper of that particular trip was uh, of course desert fox so um, you can see uh, 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 this was the month of december uh, so you can see this desert fox was clicked close to its den where it was kind of um, uh, a passing time just like that so let me tell you um, we uh, were cle- so basically uh, one day it so happened it was a kind of a dull trip uh, we were searching for a long time we uh, were not finding lot of species and um, it was not much of a successful trip but one day uh, we were we found a step eagle over a place i mean in little run of kutch if you know the terrain it's basically barren it's basically uh, salty and there are occasional um, uh, drain net system which are uh, which passes over this uh, barren land where people actually um, this uh, people actually try to harvest salt so this particular step eagle was standing over such uh, one water um, uh, such kind of drain area drinking water so we spotted it and we uh, got down we kind of uh, all of us kind of lied down to click the photograph of the stepi but the stepi got somehow irritated we are not very close also we are kind of far away but when we try to approach it 
the steppy flew away and uh, went ahead to a little distance from us. So we again tried to approach it, as you know, for a better photograph, and it again uh, got disturbed a little and uh, flew away another uh, bit of distance. And then uh, we found that it is quite out of range for our camera. And we found, OK, let us not disturb it more. And so we kind of, uh, all of us actually uh, thought, okay, we'll sit in the Jeep and uh, we'll move up, move on. At that point of time, uh, I thought, okay, I will try to click a photograph of the Stepi flight because it was going to fly. You know, if you know the bird behavior, you can predict that it's going to fly. So I thought, okay, I'll click a few shots of the flight. And then I realized there is something which the Stepi is actually looking at. And that something turned out to be a desert fox. So I immediately started clicking uh, the, the moment between this desert fox and the steppe. We were a little distant, so you can see the, a little bit of a, a loss of details in this photograph. But the next moment was really nice for us. The steppe and the desert fox tried to attack each other. The steppe tried to kind of um, uh, look fearsome with such huge wingspan. And the desert fox jumped in air with uh, all its uh, jaws and paws. And then suddenly when I expected them to uh, fight the duel, they kind of dispersed. And we thought, okay, let us, let us uh, follow this desert fox and click a few more photographs of this desert fox in its original. Anyway, so we came back into the jeep. And then we found that the desert fox is running and it's running very, very hard. So we kind of parallelly ran into our jeeps uh, for a while with the desert fox and found that the black drongo, which we all know is a fearless bird. We all see the black drongo chasing this bird and that bird and even predators around. I, for the first time, notice that the black drongo, actually there were three, they were chasing away the desert fox and fox. And you can see the desert fox was kind of running with his life. And then I realized how black drongo can irritate even a steppy eagle. This photograph, as you can see, is uh, such a tiny bird being fearless, constantly irritated, such a large bird, a steppy eagle. And so both the steppy and the desert fox flew away from us because of the black drongo giving, giving us a few opportunity to click their photos. And so this is me with, who stood astonished after this event. This trip, this uh, trip to LRK was uh, not a really very successful trip in terms of our expectation though. And one uh, thing, this is for the first time, not for the first time, but this is for another time, I missed clicking the photographs of chestnut bellied sand grouse. Uh, Santosha was kind of, uh, he could click a few photos of chestnut bellied sand grouse and irritated me with those photos, uh, editing them and showing them to me constantly. And uh, the reason why I could not spot chestnut bellied sand grouse is because of its behavior. It camouflages like anything to this barren, dull terrain. Even uh, the, uh, Santosa has had an episode of almost standing over to this very shy bird without spotting it. And when people said, you are going to stand over it, he could actually spot by the time the bird flew away. So I had to go back to LRK once again after four months for two reasons. One is clicking the photograph of this beauty, which this time did not evade me. And the other reason was to photograph the pups of uh, uh, desert fox. If you know the end of February and March is the season when you can, if you go to LRK um, and Nal Sarovar and th this kind of places, you will find uh, the pups of desert fox uh, are coming out, they're playing, and a few of the playful behavior of these pups 
uh, were caught in our camera. They gave us ample time to look at them, to, uh, to adore them really, to have the desire of cuddling them almost. And you can see uh, this is a huge mother moment for all of us, giving us um, ample pleasure to photograph this moment. So uh, connecting India from North, East and West, I again came back to uh, Bhuvaneshwar. This is a tricolored munia which we have clicked, me and Santosa, uh, close to Dera's Dam where we went. Uh, for photographing this tricolored munia. And this is a scaly breasted munia which I have clicked close to our AMC Bhuvaneshwar campus. You, you know that monsoon is the season where you can click this beauty. Uh, they, this is their breeding time. They start nesting, etc. In fact, uh, I, I, I knew, uh, even Santosa knew the uh, places of this that this scaly breasted munia has made inside our AIMS campus. And uh, I think uh, two, three months back when they were, the gardeners were doing some trimming in some of the trees, uh, one of the nests, which is an abundant nest, fell down. And I have in my room that nest uh, kept uh, decorated because I really like to study the inside of the nest, the torch and everything. So uh, the, the place which I have chosen for the south is a place known as Thattikar. It, it is in Kerala and is approximately two hours journey from Kochi. So this was a trip uh, uh, for which I'm really grateful to Santosa because he has kind of planned it uh, suddenly. It, it happened all on a sudden and we went there and the major attractions we could pick, although uh, part of the trip was washed away uh, in rain. That's the luck of both me and Santoshta. When we club around, there is inevitable rain, except for uh, our last trip to Tal Chapar. So this was a peekaboo moment for us in Munnar, where uh, the elusive orange and black and orange flycatcher came out of its hideout and uh, just looked at us for a while and went away flying. The Malabar Trogon, which is again uh, a beautiful male Malabar trogon. This is. This was a wonderful catch. The plumage uh, is really bright, and if you can look close to them, you can find a deep uh, cobalt blue-colored uh, marking around its eyes, which is very very beautiful, like Neil Kajal type of stuff. And uh, then, of course, in Thattikar, we could click a lot of photographs. This is a twist moment for us uh, when the lesser golden black back uh, kind of twisted its head in a very odd and eerie way, almost like an Eurasian dry neck. And uh, if you can closely look, you can see that it has actually uh, protruded its tongue through the beaks to, to have the ants or uh, uh, insects. You, you can find a lot of Indian gray hornbill, which has a, a part of a remnant of a beak over here. And that's the difference between a Malabar gray and Indian gray hornbill. Indian gray hornbill has a little bit of beak over, the, over this place and Malabar grays do not have. It's a tossing moment of, for uh, two Malabar gray hornbills in Thattekar. And of course, uh, one of the major attractions, would be, I have not given the photo of Arnold hanging parrot, but Malabar parakeet. Uh, uh, th this beautiful blue tail is one of the characteristic feature of this male Malabar parakeet. Uh, to tell you the truth, uh, for the male, the beak is red and for female Malabar parakeet, the beak is gray, slaty gray. And uh, I remember, um, uh, a few days back uh, in my photography club, uh, people were posting a lot of photos of orange-headed thrush from our own Ikam Rakanan. It, I think Sandeep ji, uh, Patnaik ji, uh, and many other people, I, I, I don't really remember, but everyone has gone there, clicked the photograph of this beauty in different moments. And this is one of the photos of orange-headed thrush, which is 
which you can see all over the India is, but uh, uh, you can, there, there is a variation. Uh, you can see there, there are two different subspecies in some orange headed thrush, you can see this wholly orange and at some uh, species you can find these stripes. So this is an orange headed thrush in Khattekar. As you can see, uh, it was a kind of rainy day. So it was a cloudy day and uh, the background was really dark and dull. Uh, but with dull and background, uh, when such beautiful birds like blue-throated blue flycatcher or wide-bellied blue flycatcher comes, your day is day turns different. This was this. Huh? Sorry. There was some background noise, so I muted one of the participants. No okay, 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 okay. Should I should I carry on? Yeah, 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 please, please. please. Okay, okay. And um, in Thattegar, you can also click uh, the photographs of uh, many owls. This was, uh, this we spotted in day during daytime, a brown wood owl, which was kind of in its uh, sleeping mode. Uh, remember um, uh, that owl, when it winks, which means that uh, it is opening only one of its eye, it's not really awake, it's also sleeping. So winking is considered to be part of its sleeping. And this is at the night time, a mottled wood owl came uh, with us. We actually had, this was a, a torch light, which was, uh, uh, which we, by which we could spot it. And it stayed only for, I think 10 seconds and uh, then it flew away. Of course, the major attraction of this trip was Indian pita. This was also known as Navrang in Hindi. You can see brilliant colors in this bird. The green, which is its backside, then this kind of beautiful iridescent blue, the patch of red, yellow ochre, black and white. Remember uh, the mangrove pita and Indian pita, they look similar almost, but uh, uh, a very characteristic consistent feature between a mangrove pita and Indian pita is in mangrove pita, this white patch underneath the eye is absent. Moreover, in mangrove pita, this blue shade is much more wide and that's a characteristic feature. Also in mangrove pita, the beak is a little longer, but I, for field uh, time, I do not find it very consistent actually, but this particular finding that the absence of this white patch under its eye is a very, very consistent and important clue for any uh, bird photographer. Where are these birds uh, shot? Uh, this is this is in November. This is in November. Uh, end of no Which place? Thattekar. Thattekar. Thattekar in Kerala. It's uh, uh, around uh, 65, 70 kilometers from uh, Kochi, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, now, this is one interesting story. As you can see here, the pita, it's also Indian pita. Uh, this photograph is, of course, not good. And you can wonder why. Because this is taken from inside our traveler through the, uh, through the window pane. I will tell you what happened uh, after the whole day of boarding. We were approximately eight people in a group and we were coming back to our homestay. And there uh, on the road, it was it, it is close to forest. Uh, it, you can see that this is the light of the traveler, actually the car. We could find that uh, Indian pita, it was moving in the road, going from here and there, sometimes calling and dancing, etc. And this was really peculiar for me because I never expected an Indian pita to be there at night time. And then I read and searched a bit and then I understood that Indian pita actually has a crepuscular habit, which means it. Uh, uh, all of us uh, must have heard the um, sound of or of course have seen um, lapwings, uh, red wattled lapwings, which uh, often uh, kind of uh, calls us uh, uh, during evening because of this of their crepuscular or evening kind of habit uh, similar habit is also being shown by 
Indian pita. So mm, it was a wonderful time for us to watch this habit of Indian pita that it is also active uh, at uh, the nightfall. Of course, uh, one of our major attraction at the night uh, night birding was Indian night jar, which uh, we could photograph uh, perching nicely on a uh, on a on a tree. And then uh, I wanted to also share this story of uh, the Indian night jar. Uh, this is the same day when we actually photographed this Indian pita. And after a while, one of us, uh, Mr. Praveen, who was a wonderful spotter. He suddenly stopped the driver saying, just stop, just stop. And we, we, he was sitting in the front seat and he could spot something. And he said, it's Niger. And let me tell you, this Niger, we all of us, eight of us, lie down. We asked the driver to not to switch off the light of the car. We had a flashlight, a torch with us. So we put it at some distance. We all lie down and photograph it. This was uh, photographed at one by 60 seconds. Uh, we actually uh, kept the uh, camera over the ground and reduced the shutter speed to one by 60 uh, with uh, uh, a 5.6 aperture. And still the ISO was approximately 4,000 in this particular photograph. Also, we tried clicking the photograph of Indian Niger in the car light, the ISO obviously increased a little bit. So we de decreased the shutter speed to approximately, uh, this was uh, clicked at one by 25 shutter speed with an ISO of 4,000 and an aperture of 5.6. Um, so this was a wonderful time. And actually we realized that the Niger did not, uh, did not fly away at all. So we actually have to ask the driver to cross it uh, from a roundabout way, but it still uh, sat there, perched there silently, giving us ample opportunity to photograph it. So uh, this is the simple presentation that I have made, uh, sharing the vastness and the beauty of India from different domains. This, is, this photograph is obviously taken in our own Mangala Jodi, which is one of the wonderful spots. This was a Monday morning, uh, uh, I think in 2020, January, and where I can find the duel between a gray heron and a black headed ibis over a snake kill. And the next shot gives you uh, the reality of this fight. And so uh, we came back, I came back to Orissa once again with a lot of peace and a lot of songs in my mind. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, such a beautiful presentation. Uh, by sitting here, we have uh, seen the four parts of India with you. Especially, you are a great border. Uh, so, over to you, Satyajit Bhai. Uh, uh, it's like... Uh, awesome journey really and uh, definitely like uh, kind of presented really well even uh, the story uh, was like really uh, kind of explained in a way that it attracts uh, all of us and really uh, kind of a lot of rare birds particularly like uh, just to name like Rufius, uh, Hornbill, uh, so a lot of lot of rare birds and I'm, I'm really happy to uh, like uh, be part of this session today. I am just like requesting others to say <laughs> we have been talking. Maybe others Thank can you. also ask something you, they want and want. Hello. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm. I'm. I'm Dr. Santos uh, Subradeep's uh, friend so, and partner uh, in crime. <laughs> I just wanted to tell about Subhradeep. Like, actually, he's a wonderful uh, storyteller. Like, uh, from out of nothing, he can tell you a beautiful story. So, um, uh, I have been very, very fortunate uh, to uh, travel with him uh, to many parts of India um, uh, and uh, shoot uh, beautiful uh, bird pics. 
um his his uh, um, batting experience is actually uh, uh, like uh, he's three to four years senior to me in batting even if i am six years senior to him in age <laughs> well, he, he is doing batting since many years uh, like i think 10 years or more and he uh, the best part of him is that he he understand he understand uh, uh, and do not try to mug up he understand uh, the birds and he understand the species how it is named how why it is named everything and he try to explain to others also the why the name, bird is named such why the genus is named such why the species is named such such as that and uh, and and he is a very good uh, learner actually uh, when he i met him uh, he was uh, he was novice at photographing he was novice at photographing Absolutely. and uh, <laughs> yeah and uh, Uh, i have uh, inspired him uh, to uh, take up uh, photography because i knew that he is a very good batter he is he had some good images with his 7300 so i have inspired him to uh, take up it uh, take up uh, um, photography as a like uh, to express his uh, knowledge and That's he has uh, uh, in last 3 uh, years i think in last 3 years 3 three and a half years he has learned a lot Uh, he has learned uh, editing photography uh, like very fast and he has picked up very fast and has uh, done justice uh, to many images and uh, <laughs> today's today's presentation i think uh, around 40% i have also edited in the beginning yes when he absolutely to, <laughs> when absolutely. he was trying to uh, learn all those things so i have to yes. show them that these images can be edited like in the, that way and so he got more inspired and uh, learned Uh, i am happy for him uh, I, 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 so... I, may i add something i i am a, i used to be a very very lazy person over my photographs <laughs> <laughs> i didn't do anything i used to come back uh, satisfied and fulfilled and uh, sat over the photographs and he was uh, he constantly pushed me give me your photographs i led it i led it give me your photographs and he while doing it uh, being i know you know you cannot uh, let other person do your own job and just roam around i also did that but he being a being an elder brother uh, also uh, put me sit by his side and uh, kind of uh, explained me see how i am doing and then gradually he actually inspired me to edit things constantly taught me uh, discussed my mistakes and uh, let me grow yes a wonderful presentation subhadeep actually uh, i am very happy to listen to you after a long time regarding the presentation and a uh, few of your images of the uh, that uh, uh, north indian dam uh, i just forgot that uh, dam's name yes nagrota suryan pong dam nagrota nagrota pong dam pong dam pong dam i have i have not seen your images of pong dam rest of all i have seen that so very beautiful presentation thank, thank you. you thank you coming from you it's really wonderful anyone else kisi aur ko kuch puchna hai or anything to say